a post-game show after the Ravens beat the Titans 24-16 in London. Glenn Clark, uh, Ken Zalas, and Andrew Stecker are here. We're awaiting arrival of our friends, Rita and Femi. I know Rita was at Guilford Hall Brewery for the big game watch party today. And I'm not sure exactly what Femi was up to, but sometimes he likes to enjoy an adult beverage on game day as well. So it could be anything. Um, I know it, this did not look great. By the way, the Project Game Day post game show is brought to you by Superbook, AJ Michaels, and HelpMyGamblingProblem.org. I know this did not look great for uh, significant moments in this game, but all in all, it ends up being the functional victory that the Ravens badly needed after last week. Ken, I'll let you start, and you can tell me why you think they should fire the coach anyway. No, no, it was just funny. I mean, I mean the way the way they coached the game was just uh, it made me laugh all day because it's like we're taking points, except for the two point conversion try, which, you know, is just a me thing versus anything. I understand the math. I just don't like giving up a point in the second quarter of football games, but it was just, it was just funny. It's like they had ample opportunity to go for it on fourth down in the red zone a couple of times and they took the points and it's like, okay, well, well, you know, they give them a sedative on the point and it's, it, it's continuing. Um, but it was very workmanlike. Um, you know, it's not going to change my view on anything. I mean, they it's a game they should have won, just like they should have won the other ones against, I don't think the Titans is a particularly good football team, especially against a team like the Ravens who stops the run. And the Ravens did that pretty well outside of the one really big run by, by Henry. So, uh, you know, I'm not, you know, he just made me laugh today. I don't and know why. I don't think any of them were bad decisions or even questionable decisions at no, any point. No, I don't. I, I don't think I'm a hello. Yeah, I don't. My think son they wants were, to say hello. There's, there's my okay. son checking in. I don't think they were either. It's just like he coached backwards. You know, well, he, he did. He did things. He did things that hey, that we scream about when he doesn't do them and they don't work. Uh, like take the points, like. Just, just you know, just simplify the game, shorten the game. It's like they did those things. There are still those silly little plays that they, for some reason, like in their, they have in their bag of trip tricks that don't work that often with the the sure, Andrews sure, thing. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, but but it was just it like he just coached backwards to me. He didn't coach like the aggressive analytics coach that I don't like. He did. He did all the things today that, you know, take the points early in games, kick field goals. You have the best field goal kicker in the league. You're playing good defense against a team that really can't hurt you. You know, take advantage of that. And they did that today. And and, and, And when he was going to throw the red flag and he held on to the red flag for five minutes i'm like just put it back in your pocket dude yeah you're not getting which anything he finally, out of that which he finally did <laughs> rita is at guilford hall brewery where they had the watch yeah. party today rita how I did the, how I did am. the crowd there handle everything yeah it was great today was a great day say hello everybody what's going on what's going on what a party that was yeah, i was I know, seeing it was a- it was a great event. Um, I mean, listen, I ain't never seen so many people out at 930 for a football game ever in my life, ever. Uh, so um, it was a great time. How did the crowd there handle the uh, the awkward moment there in the second half where it looked like things were starting to go the way that they've gone a little bit too much in recent years for the Baltimore Ravens? I don't think they ever wavered. I don't think that they ever um, felt like that this game was out of reach. Um, I think that there was some frustration there, mainly because the Ravens are obviously moving the ball, but they're not scoring touchdowns, they're scoring field goals. So I think you get a little nervous in that regard because at the end, at the end of the day, the Titans still got good players. They still have Derrick Henry. They still have DeAndre Hopkins. Um, so you have got, you have people that were concerned about what exactly was going to happen, but I don't think that it ever wavered into um, it being like, Oh, they were going, they were going to win this game. It never felt that way. I think it was just more frustration in terms of like what they were, what the Ravens were doing as opposed to what the Titans were doing. If that makes sense. 
Femi, let's try to Femi Ayambadejo, Ravens Super Bowl 35 champion, with us once again here on the Project Game Day post game show. Femi, I, I I feel like it's more like a relief after they get through this because there were some nervy moments there in the third quarter. Did did you start to feel that it was anything of a viable threat, or this is just the way that football games go? That sometimes no, you, no, you have a cup. No, I, I was I was I'm going. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I definitely felt like, oh, here we go again. Yeah. You know, I think that there's a critical play in every game. Um, in this case, it was the Pierce roughing the passer penalty. Everything ah. changed from that play. I can literally pick a play that every game I can pick the fumble in the Indianapolis game. Um, I can talk about the fumble in the Pittsburgh game. It's there's always a play the Ravens fail on that leads to a problem. And today, Geno Stone, I, like literally right on time, I'm like, who's going to make a play that's going to slow this this tide that the Titans, this little run they're on right now. You know, you you have the 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 rough in the passer, then you have the 66 yard run, then you have the I think they end up getting the field goal. But then you have the interception, then you have the ejection, and then they get a touchdown. That's all after the roughing the passer play. Yep. You need someone to come in and either make a big play on offense or make a big play on defense, and Geno Stone was that guy. But when you look at the stat sheet, uh, Ravens dominated. I mean, once again, on paper, they dominate pretty much every game, right? 20 first downs to five first downs. Time of possession dominated, right? Uh, third down conversion, eight for 16. If you just look at these numbers, you're, you're going to think they won 35 to three. You know what I mean? But that's not the case because instead of getting touchdowns, as Rita had had mentioned, they got field goals. But that's Tennessee's specialty, though, is the red is red zone defense. So I'm not that doesn't bother me at all. What bothers me is when you continue to get in your own way. And they did it a little bit again today. Um, but I wasn't as nervy as I was against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh just felt totally different. And just, Pittsburgh is just a, a lot more resilient than Tennessee is right now. But uh, overall, I'm still looking for that perfect game. I'm looking for that game where you don't make a mistake that allows the team to get back in a game they have no business being in. The Titans had no business being in this game. I'm happy they won it. But Glenn, to be honest with you, I'm not even going to argue with you. You're right. I'm just relieved. I'm not happy. Yeah. I'm just relieved. That's and that's I, what I'm, I'm curious. And I'm curious to know Femi's thoughts on that um, roughing the passer. I understand that the rules are, are, are what they are, and they that they mentioned that the body, you know, body weight and all that stuff. Weight. But I, I felt I didn't personally see that. Did you feel? Did I you feel that that's it. what he no, did? It's a penalty. Okay. That people can. This is the thing, Rita. Um, and and I know the players are going to be like, "What do you mean? What do you mean, bro? You know the damn rules. Don't act like you're surprised." Michael Pierce fell on him full body weight. He had no business even taking him to the ground. The ball was out of his hand. It's called selfishness. You get thirsty. You get selfish. You want, You made all that movement. I know you're 340 pounds. I don't care. You've got to pull up. You know they're going to call this. And I see a lot of players making all the adjustments to late hits, low hits, roughing the passer. Players around the league are making the adjustment. Michael Pierce did not make the adjustment. That ball was out of his hand when he decided to take Tannehill to the ground. Mistake on his part. Changed the whole tide of the game. Just because we're here, before we get into because I want to revisit something Ken said a second ago. Just, uh, Femi, what would you think of the decision to eject Kyle Hamilton? Because I feel like most people are in agreement. Of course, it was a penalty. Obviously, yeah. it yeah, was a penalty. Yeah. That That's not debatable. But it feels like ejections should be for dirty plays. And yeah. I didn't think that was a dirty I, play. I think it should have been a warning. I think it should have been a warning. But I, I'll, I tell agree. You what, yeah, I agree. I'll tell you what, though. That ball was caught until he hit him. I mean, we're talking like they're inside the right. They're inside the five yard line. You know what I mean? Kyle Hamilton made a hell of a play. Now he had no one. He was not purposely trying to go helmet to helmet. He was just trying to break the play up. So kudos to him for breaking, breaking the play up. But we know that's a penalty. Have no problem with the call. The ejection was rough. But you know what, Glenn? I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a person who believes in player safety. Yeah. If, I'm okay with the, with, the, with the ejection. I think it was a little harsh, but I'm okay with it because I know what the ramifications are of hits like that. We've legislated those type of hits out of the game. And I know Kyle wasn't trying to do that. So overall, I'm kind of okay with how everything unfolded. I think everything kind of uh, – uh, it, it was fair. It was, it was fair play. Okay. I, 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 let me say something, Glenn. And, and I think that I think that that would have been more receptive if the referees weren't as bad as they were already prior to that ejection. I think people would have been a little bit more understanding. But and I am not a person that is a person that blames refs. You, you know, Glenn, that I'm a person that's like 
The yep. refs are – you can't allow the refs to dictate how the game is played. It should never dictate how the game is played. But what I can't ignore is how bad the referees were today. And I think that that's why there's a discourse about Kyle Hamilton's ejection today because prior to that, they had, to me, they had not officiated well at all. So the egregious one was the Marcus Williams run one on the first drive for the Titans, right? Like that was yes. the one, if, if you wanted to look at something and say, I mean, what are we doing here? Yeah. Um, and I forget who the referee was. There was, two. there was two on that first drive. There was that two. Was not yes. yeah. There were two. Not penalties. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, thank you. But I thought that Williams one, I mean, like that was pure. I, I Sometimes I think things are ticky tack and go 50-50. The Williams one is he's making a play on the ball. Like that's as bad he has as every bad. Right to that ball. And the thing right. is he went, he went vertical, Glenn. He yeah. Went vertical too. You know what I mean? So yeah, the, the refs need to swallow these whistles and, 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 and these flags on a lot of plays right now. They're interjecting themselves into things they have no business being a part of all the time, that's every it. week. You know what that's I mean? That's it. Like, yo, man, like you're affecting games, guys. What are you doing? You know what I, I mean? It's ridiculous. I, I want to go around the group and get everybody's thoughts on this because Ken brought something up earlier. He said it was interesting to see John Harbaugh take the points today. It was interesting to see a team be a little bit less aggressive than yes. we've been used to seeing them be. Um, Femi, I'll start with you, but I want to give everybody an opportunity to chime in on this. Do you feel like the other thing that jumped out to me today is this is not the same bully ball team that it was a few years ago, right? The short yardage running was a problem today, as we saw when they tried to run the Mark Andrews play. Are, are these two things going hand in hand now? Do you feel like when a team isn't as good in short yardage running, they have to become less aggressive and make fewer decisions like that moving forward? Glenn, I'm so happy you asked this question. I have notes on both of these. Let me start with the, with the Coach Harbaugh conservative calling. I think there is a sugar high and there's an addiction you get to what we did in 2019, 2020, 2021 with our ability to just abuse people running the football. Basically, since Lamar became a starter, running the football has not been a problem. Todd Munkin's scheme is a little bit different and his style of play calling is a little bit different. It's a little bit more finesse to me. I have a problem with it personally. I'm not a big mm. fan of, of, of a lot of his run call. I'm not, I'm just not. Okay. And it's getting a little predictable for me on first down runs, a lot of first down runs, especially when the Ravens get a lead, he gets conservative and it becomes very predictable. And I see yeah. that every game. I can't stand that. It's zero, zero, Todd. We can't, we can't, because you're up by 12, the Ravens have given up 10 wins with a lead in the fourth quarter since 2021, the most in NFL history at that time yep. period. It yep. is insane to me. And a lot of it to me is mentality. You got to keep being aggressive. So in regard to, um, and I'm blending both your answer, the answers now. Yes, Coach Harbaugh is being more conservative, but he should be. He's got a yeah. very talented team. He doesn't need to be as aggressive. I love that. I love taking the points. I agreed with it throughout the game today. I want to see that throughout the rest of the season. Unless you're in a game that you must win and you're down, this is the way that we should be playing. Let Justin Tucker go out there and kick three, four, five, six field goals. I don't care. It's about winning the game. Secondarily, um, this, this run scheme – to me, it does not run as much power. There's not a, a, as much uh, offensive lineman pulling. And Lamar's bread and butter, what made Lamar great, a lot of those, those zone read plays were zone read, but he was running QB power. So basically, there's guys pulling. Lamar's faking that, that, that handoff, and he's taking that ball like right down the center's ass. Today, he actually should have had a touchdown. On that play that he didn't score, he, he, you need to be patient as a runner still. He actually got caught behind – on the right side of the line of scrimmage, had he just gotten right behind the center, the lane opened up right to the left, but Lamar was just wasn't patient. But I think it's Coach Munkin's style, this play calling. So you're, to answer your question, yes, let's be more conservative going forward. And yes, we are not as dominant at the point of attack, but I think it's schematic. I don't think it's physical ability or, or, or philosophy or culture. I think it's just the style of runs that Coach Munkin likes to call. Those other runs are still in his repertoire. He's just not calling them as much. All right, so I want to get so 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 Greg yeah. Roman so, so taking some of Greg Roman's uh, runs would not be a bad idea, family. Is that what, what I'm hearing from you? Agreed. Okay, because I look, I asked that because Trippy is here, and uh, please, Glenn, go to Trippy real fast because he was talking some stuff. Trippy, you gotta you, you gotta yeah. unmute yourself, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm outside. That's why I I didn't want to interrupt while Benny was you, talking. Man. But I agree with Benny, man. Like I'm happy we got the win, but. It's the same old stuff. Like, what's going on? Like, we not dialing up plays. Like, it's crazy. It was 18-3, and three, and the final score was what? 
24 to what? Whatever the score was. 16, yeah. It, it don't make sense. So you're telling me in the second half, we only could dial up two field goals? Like, we got to play better. Like, come on. Like, the defense played their job. That's not what you I mean, said. That's not what you said, Trippy. Tell them what you said to me. Oh, Tell oh, them what you oh, said. Oh, oh. If I wish Greg Roman was back. <laughs> that is- <laughs> Hold on, what's going to remind me? Because I did say a few things, though. That is what you you said. You missed Greg Roman. That is what you said. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because That's I mean, true. if you, I mean, I was, it, I was just joking, though, uh, 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 Rita. But <laughs> my only reason why I said that because it's like it's the same thing. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm happy we took the points, but we should have had more than three points. That's just my thing. Like. It's still some stuff we got to work on. And like Benny was saying, like, I don't see no, like, the guards pulling, like, none of that. Like, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to still be patient, though, but the offense got to play better. And um, receivers, they did their job. Um, I'm going to be yeah, real with you. Much better they, day from the receivers today. Bateman, other than, did, other Bateman, than the Bateman did, thing. Yeah, Eey. Bateman, he did all right. But come on, bro. You got to finish that play regardless if you think the ball, like, come on, do something about that. But yeah. I'm going to go back on mute because I know this music loud. Though. Appreciate you, bro. That's, right, that's trippy. Look who else just checked in today and needs to hit on yes. mute. Yes. Look who else has come to join us. The great Josh Charles What's hanging up, out. Man? How you doing, buddy? Hey, Rocco. How you doing? What's up, Rocco? We were in a car heading to a play date out in Brooklyn. Just finished the game. Um, how you guys feeling? I just jumped on. Is Femi still here or no? I'm still here, Josh. I'm still here, brother. My man. Good to see you, dude. It's been a minute. It's been too, a minute. Buddy. I, I know. You. Yeah. How are you? Doing good? Good, to, good um, to see you, man. I, I was just saying to Glenn, I was texting Glenn during the game. The one thing for me that I, I'm so thrilled that we we uh, broke through on was I felt like it was a complete repeat of the other games where I was watching it, saying we're going to win this game. Oh, we're going to lose. We're going to give this game away. It looked like the same thing was happening from a dominant early first half, just like in Pittsburgh, not as much maybe in, in, in uh, Indy, but still. And then they just – we, we broke the script. So I'm glad that we pushed through. That's the positive. But it really is unsettling to see that we, we, we need to be able to put guys away a little bit more. It's frustrating to me as a fan when I think some of these games shouldn't shouldn't be coming down to a, an onside kick. But the defense was just on fire at the end there, too. They were just teeing up Matabique, right? I mean, Jadavion Clowney was great down the stretch. Oh, yep. yeah. Oh, for that's sure. That's not his name? Wait, Rocco's telling me that's not it. That is his name. Justin Matabike. Yeah. Matabike. Oh, Matabike. Not Matabike. I See, Rock Matabique. knows. Rocco knows. He knows. He just corrected me. <laughs> Rich Eisen Matabique. wasn't sure what his name was. That's, that's true. That's true, too. Rich Eisen was really struggling with that one. That was, <laughs> he rough. was rich. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. He announced the other, he announced the 92 from the other team. And then he was like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm also tough. going to say one thing, maybe in fairness to the Ravens. I think that call Michael Pierce was so bad and such ooh, a game-changing ooh, call. Fe- Femi, let, let Femi, 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 Femi is going to tell you. Hey, Josh, Josh it's, a, it's, it's a penalty. It's a penalty. And let me tell you something, Josh. Uh, you're you're in London, right? So when you get to watch no, it. I'm from, not. Oh, you're not in London? Okay. All right. Well, I, thought you were, I thought you were like leaving the stadium or something. But, I um, <laughs> okay, yeah. But when you watch it, the thing is Michael Pierce took two steps and then went to the ground. He could have hit him and, and pulled up. He didn't have to go to the ground with him. And then he dropped his full weight on him. And so every week those – we don't we don't like these calls, but they're getting called every week. All the players know now you got to make the adjustment. All the players have made adjustments right. on other type plays. It's a ticky tack play that you know years ago wouldn't be a penalty, but there's definitely a penalty today. I hear you. I mean, and, I, and that's probably right, but I guess for me, I didn't see the second step. I felt like that's a big boy's moving. I do hear you that when he went to the ground, he probably could have leaned to the side a little bit, but I don't know. I, I felt like even in even in the world where they are calling that, that seemed a little close to me, but. You know, well, you know hey, these refs, Josh. I, I was saying it right before you came on. These these refs are trying to get Instagram famous or something. They they want to be on, <laughs> on social media. They want some love. They want to be talked about. And it's not and it's not good. I guess all I guess all attention is good attention in this case because the refs are making their presence felt in a way that fans absolutely are disgusted by, and that's a problem. Ben, can I ask you a question? Just in terms of like you're saying that the, the, the Hamilton call, right? Rock when I were watching it, we were saying like absolutely a foul, no question. Yeah. But yes. if you're ejecting him, don't isn't that implying that he definitely did it on purpose? Like, how, how are you? Yeah, yeah I, I think I think the hit was so violent. And, you know, they've really legislated those plays out of football. I was saying before you came on that I understand the call. I don't agree with it, but I get it because player safety is is really the apex of 
hits like that are the the apex of violence in, in the NFL, and they sure. really don't want anyone to revert back to that style of play. So I, I get it. it. I think it's harsh, but big picture, I understand it. But how many, I haven't even seen that much this year. That's why I was a little surprised by that. Yeah, yeah it's I still mean, rare. He, he really long. I mean, it was helmet. He knocked him out. I mean, put it this no, way. He did. You could tell. He, if, if he doesn't do that, he comes down with that catch. That ball's inside the five yard line. So it's I'm, I'm torn between what that play means for my team, but also how it affects players long term. Because I, I I played with Junior Seau, right? I played with yeah. a lot of guys that have had issues with CTE and problems down the road. So those are the kind of hits that lead to those issues down the road. So I'm trying to be balanced and fair and not let my purple Kool-Aid affect how I'm going to call something right. as an analyst. So to fa- in fairness to the to the violence of that play, I understand it. I don't like it, but I completely understand it. No, I, I get it. I, I just think I don't see him as a dirty player. No, perfectly. not at all. We all agreed that it was not a dirty play. Josh, yeah. I want because I still want to let uh, uh, Andrew and KZ chime in on this. One thing we were going around the group about was: Were you good with the Ravens and John Harbaugh being a little more conservative in decision making today, taking the points when the opp- they had the opportunity to do it instead of going for it on fourth down? I, I was okay with that. I really was. I mean, I, 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 I was watching just like I was in Pittsburgh. You know, saying in the beginning of this game, we're, this is a dominant performance. The offense is flying. Um, and I felt I was okay with his conservative approach, especially with how things had gone based on last week. But I just couldn't believe that. I thought this is a team that very easily could be six and zero. I mean, you know, uh, should be six and zero. Quite frankly, we could be. And I and I and I was watching the first the first half, feeling like, wow, the okay, self inflicted wounds. And then when it started to turn, I thought, oh wait a second, is this is this is this going to define our season? So I'm very happy that the team pushed through, through some adversity and, and overcame it. So yeah. uh, anyway, that's, so I'm okay with John's conservative approach there. I'm fine with and, it. I mean, it looked like he was ready to go for it on that final one, but I'm okay with it. I think it's Yeah, you got to make it, make it a two possession game. Just be done with it. And I think yeah, that absolutely. was. Absolutely. Defense yep. was playing pretty yep. great. So yeah, I'm good with that. Andrew Stecker, your thoughts. I was okay with the, the conservative decision making in terms of go for it don't go for it take the points what what i was concerned with and like i go back to last week and i look at okay the ravens probably could have i say could have maybe even should have really taken the steelers apart had there not been so many drops in the first half had there not been so many just just mistakes in the first half of this game i felt like it was all down to once they got inside maybe not the red zone but at least the 30 yard line of the titans the play calling just kind of bottled up and Femi was alluding to this earlier like they were running the ball between the tackles at that time when they were they were moving the ball down the field really great but then all right. of a sudden you got down into the into the attacking area and you're like okay we're just going to run between the tackles with Gus Edwards here they weren't really spreading it out trying to let Lamar create they weren't trying to throw the ball down there and I get that it's tougher to do and Femi even said earlier like the Titans have a good red zone defense I'll, I'll credit yeah. them I get I get it the other team tries too but that part of it to me was frustrating because the offense was really moving the ball. I mean, with the with the decision making and the, you know, we're going to kick the field. Look, the Titans could not do much today against the defense. The defense, I thought, played really well. You look at Derrick Henry's stat line. He has 97 yards, but 63 of it came, right, came one on play. one play. It's yeah. not like one he, play, right? It's not like it was King Henry, a vintage King Henry performance at all. Um, Tannehill threw for 70. I, I just had to look this up. Tannehill threw for 76 yards on 16 attempts. Uh, Malik Willis for his credit had 74 yards on five attempts. Like they were not producing offensively. So I get the, the, the play, the, the, the decision-making rather in terms of no kick the field goal, get the points on the board. Like I'm fine with that. Normally I'm not fine with that. Normally I want aggressiveness and I want you to be going for it, get touchdowns, put teams away. But to, to Femi's point earlier, like this is a different team now, not under Mm. a Greg Roman offense, you know, that there, there, but there were a lot of mistakes in terms of, I thought the red zone play calling, especially in the first half. It's yeah. interesting, and, and John. I just, I just, I just want to, um, yeah. I just want to say that coming into this game, the Titans were ninth in points allowed and ninth in run defense. Yes, they struggled. They were in the bottom half in terms of pass defense, but the ninth in points allowed to me sticks out. So they're not a team that really gives up a ton of um, scores. That defense. So and, I just and, and, that and to that point too, Rita, the, the Ravens had come into this game being very good scoring in the red zone, scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Maybe yeah. this is just a little bit of regression to the mean, like perhaps, I don't know. It's, it's one game, but like, yeah. it's, it's one of those things that I would have liked to see 
them not just hand the ball up, up the middle to Gus Edwards uh, on a couple of those plays when they're trying to put the ball in the end zone because that particularly not working that's well. the strength of the titans defense that's where jeffrey simmons mm-hmm. lives right, right. Like, exactly right, right. that's kind of the odd part in some of and, those and lamar, was, lamar was having a, and lamar was having a good game in terms of creating things we saw the one like video game-esque play that he made to scramble for the first down like he he led the team in rushing yards like he was he was if you get him in space in this munkin offense that we've seen good things can happen he, he can create but like going back to that we're just going to run read option and give the ball to Gus in between the tackles was obviously not, not the, it was not part of the recipe that was going to work in this, in in the red zone. Hey Glenn, let me, let me add one thing before we Mm -hmm. forget about it. I've been very critical about Devin Duvernay the last couple of weeks. Oh, great point. We all have, we all have. Today, today he showed up and he ran like he was trying to do something, Mm -hmm. which I appreciated because we need him to do that. You know what I mean? Secondarily, and philosophically from 30,000 feet, guys, this is one of the biggest issues that we need to be mindful of the rest of the year. Predictability and conservatism. Conservatism on, on inside the red zone, I'm fine with kicking it on fourth and one. What I'm not okay with from a conservative standpoint is, is being overly predictable on first down and running yeah. the ball up the gut to guess Gus Edwards. When you Where's the creativity at? Where's that at? Like I thought that Coach Monkey was going to bring some creativity in. and some. I know they ran the shovel pass against Pittsburgh last week. It didn't work. So what? But you tried something different. Can I get a little, a little, a little, uh, you know, uh, jet sweep with a, with a, you know, have the, have the receiver throw the ball maybe? Just something. Show me something that I haven't seen. Show me something different. Like I still haven't seen that yet. And I don't think you're going to win games on gimmicks, but it's just to set up the future weeks so teams see you doing something different, so they have to think about it. When when you do something out of character, that's a big red flashing light for teams to go, oh, we need to prepare for that. They might try that shit again, and we need to be ready for it. You know what I mean? So they need to. I need to see a little bit more of that in regard to I'm okay with being conservative on the field goal side, but I'm not okay with being predictable on first down and just you running don't like the, ball the first and second middle. down play. But not yeah, only first like- and second down, not only first and second down, like third and four. And, and I might be talking out of my ass a little here because I got to go back and look at what they called. But like third and four, it felt like they were going to try and run it up the middle. And it's like, wait a second. Why are we not getting a little bit more creative on those kinds of plays, too, so that and you're it- not stuck with a fourth and one decision? Yeah, and even if you're going to run it, Andrew, and I agree with you, I, I didn't like the designs that they were using or, or the sets that they were using yeah. in that regard. It, it just didn't look good. So my thing is, there. If you want to run, I mean, that's fine, but you gotta you, you've got to show like you're doing something else so you can sell the <laughs> you can sell the pass so then you can run, and that's something that they did not do a good job of today. At Guys, all. Give me, you also give me you also give me one second, Andrew. I, that's true, too. That is true, too. I got to remind everybody, I always forget we got to pay our bills around here. Hey, what company has the expertise and technology to make your home substantially more energy efficient, comfortable, and even virus free? It's AJ Michaels Heating and Air Conditioning in Baltimore, Annapolis at AJMichaels.com. By the time I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I got to pay everybody's talent fees today. It's enough to have to pay Rita and Femi. Imagine what shot. Andrew, you should be stunned. Andrew actually charges me the most of everybody on this call. So I got to deal with that. Make sure we get the bills paid. Um, I want to go back to something. And and Ken, I, I haven't come to you in a little while. So let me come to you for a second. Because the other thing that jumped out at me today, and where I want to give credit to the Ravens, at the beginning of the game, they looked like the team that was comfortable. They look like the team that got to London early in the week, that adjusted, that seemed to be ready to go. I don't know that that's why they won the football game, but that stood out to me as being a storyline. Why? Why? Because they look like that every week. It's fair. That's fair. But the Titans didn't look comfortable. The Titans looked like a team that was not ready to play a 930 a.m. football game today. They looked like they were not prepared at all to play this football game whatsoever. I think it was a major storyline. I clearly Rita disagrees with me, and that's fine. I don't we'll deal think she with disagrees. I don't. I just don't think she thinks it's a big deal. I don't that, she, yeah, that's all. That's yeah. all. I, I feel like they look like that every week on their first drive. So I don't know. But London, but Rita, reason. London's a different animal, though. London, London, the the travel, the okay. time, like it's been it's been very um, unpredictable in regard to how teams come out and play as a in in, in London. You know what I mean? So I understand what Glenn's saying, but I I, I actually agree with both of you. This yeah, and I don't think, again, I'm not trying to suggest it's the reason why the Ravens won today by any stretch of the imagination, I I but I, I think you know, we joked about, hey, do it completely different than you did the last time, but I still, I'll never understand the thought process. Femi, you can take me through this. These asking players to sleep on a plane on a Thursday night and pretend that everything is just normal when you arrive on Friday, it's just the same as it was. 
I, I'm not you. I don't look like you. I'm not as big as Ronnie Stanley is. But it's miserable to me, the thought of, and I've even slept in the, the nice bed seats on a plane, and it's still not the same. It's not a you, night of sleep in your bed and preparing you for this. I'm, it's you're as big as him me. on the inside, Glenn. You're Thank you, Chuck. What a, what, a, what, a, what, a, what a flex, what a flex, what a flex by the way, Glenn. Yeah, that's <laughs> very <laughs> sweet. You in, the, you in the big laydown bed? What a flex. <laughs> I've done it once. Let's not pretend like it's how Fancy I normally fly. Happened to me one time in my life. But you know, so like, I, it befuddles me that teams continue to think that after Athletes, that professional athletes can just live that way and say, here's how you get your night of a sleep on a Thursday night ahead of a football game. Let me peel back the curtain for you in regard to an NFL locker room and preparation. You don't prepare for London the week of London. You prepare for London at the beginning of the season. You know what I mean? You're you're working in extra rest. You're talking about the rest. You're talking about the hydration and travel. You're talking about supplementation and macronutrients and all the different sleep and, and, and fitness coaches, whoever's out there helping. You're preparing for that way earlier. You know what I mean? If you prepare for London the week of London, good luck. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of things that go into preparing. You know, I, I played uh, with the Cardinals versus the Niners in the first game in Mexico City back in 06, I think it was. Now, obviously, flying from Arizona to Mexico City is not a super far flight, right? It's altitude in Mexico City that's the problem. It's not the distance or the time change because there's no time change. It's the altitude yeah. is the problem there. Each long trip, each each international game comes as comes with its own kind of idio idiosyncratic issues that you've got to address. And that starts at the beginning of the season. I promise you that the Ravens, and, and maybe we don't agree with the Titans flying out on Friday or whatever they did, but they were preparing for this game before. And the data, the big data actually says the teams that fly out late actually win more than the teams that fly out early. It's but it's, so small weird sample si it's small sample size. Yeah. And is not big enough to make that determination yet. And I think with the advancements in micro uh, in, in uh, wearable data and bio uh, biometric data, we're starting to understand how it actually works better. Um, don't let me go down a rabbit hole. I'm, I'm you know, human. No, no, I know this is your weird world. I, I get it. it. No, but yeah. just saying that there, there's not a right or a wrong way to do this. The only wrong thing to do is to, is to start preparing for a, an international trip the week of the trip. As long as you're doing stuff before that, which I'm sure I know Mike Vrabel very well. We've played against each other for a long time. Yeah. We have a great relationship. Whenever I see him, we like to chop it up and talk. Um, he's a very smart guy. I think he's one of the most underrated coaches in the NFL. And remember his pedigree. Remember where he comes from, right? So yeah. I don't think Mike Vrabel is going to leave any stone unturned. This is the choice he made. I don't know if they do it differently as a result of this game or not. They're just not that talented. Let's just be honest. Tennessee is not that talented. That's fair. And I think that's the ultimate difference maker. I will say that privately, <laughs> a lot of the Ravens players that I talked to about this topic in the weeks leading up were very relieved that they were doing it this way. They yeah. did not want to yeah. go through the Thursday prefer, night thing. Glenn, I would prefer to do it this the way that Coach Harbaugh did it and be okay. out there for five, six, seven days. I played in NFL Europe um, as an allocated player from the Vikings before I played for the Ravens. The last year, the 1998 NFL Europe London Monarchs, right? London is just a whole, and I know that's a long time ago. Boy, I, I can't, I, it's just, every but, time I look at you, I'm like, you're not as old as I know you are. But yeah. like, yeah, yeah, that was a reminder in that moment. <laughs> I, got that, I, got that, I got that face cream, baby. Yeah. Drop your drop your moisturizer in the comments. Dude, I, I will. Between between you and Josh, it's actually surreal. Like I'm watching two people that do not age somehow. It's remarkable. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm very old. Can I? I want to add to Fem I'm, I'm not, I wanted to add to Femi's point too. I, and, and your point too, Glenn. I really enjoyed seeing the guys look relaxed all week. I know people were kind of complaining about, oh, well, they out there shopping and stuff. So, well, yeah, they have time. They have yeah. time to get adjusted to the eight hours. They have time to, you know, blow off some steam. They have time to kind of do the 360 stuff that they were doing with the fans. And I, I liked seeing that because they didn't look hard pressed to be prepared for a game. They looked like they were loose. They look like they were having a good time. And I do think that that's important going into a big game like that on Sunday. I could be wrong about that. No, but you know, Rita, you are right. No, Rita, let me say this. You are correct. 100% correct. You want to replicate at home on the road as best you can. But when you're yep. playing like on the road in the U S that's different because you know how that works. You fly out on Friday, you get to the hotel, you have a meeting. Maybe sometimes you'll have a walkthrough depending on where, who, what, when, but you're, it's a business trip. You know, you could be playing on Mars. It won't matter. But when you do an international thing and you're out there for six, seven days, you want to replicate your normal week. And guess what? 
Guys have families. They have kids that go to school. They go to movies. They go out to dinner. They shop. They go to Whole Foods. They go get groceries. You want to you want to mimic that week as best you can, and because you, you want to be loose. And repetition has a calming effect. Like I'm a creature of habit, and I can tell you, most guys that I've played with, like I I do the same thing before every game. I eat the exact same meal, but my coffee's made exactly the same. Like I don't change anything. With, with mayonnaise, right? Like Will Levis. Oh, you oh dump a bunch of. By the way, you know how much I hate mayonnaise, bro. If mayonnaise touches anything I eat, I will not eat it. Just oh, I love you even more. I can't oh, believe yeah, I, I love I, you even more now. Yeah, I hate oh. I hate all condiments unless it's ketchup. <laughs> oh, now wait a second. Soy sauce. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait I, I a minute. That's the conversation we got to have wait, for another day. Friend. Wait a second. You don't you don't ever put like a nice barbecue sauce on a piece of chicken? Okay, ever? I, like, I like barbecue sauce. Yeah. Okay. Thank uh, God. Oh, this is gonna get. But no blue cheese, no ranch, no Thousand Island, no, no mustard, blue cheese, no guacamole, no sour cream, none of that bullshit. This is. This is weird. Right. This has gone a different place. Hey, hey, I, just threw, I just threw everybody off with that. Can, it, can hey, I? Demi, Demi, you got to call the radio show when we we got to talk about this. On a <laughs> yeah, show. we'll have to do this. this is a good We're one. gonna definitely dive in. Can I? Can I? Can I say something that might fire up KZ like I try to do every week about Harbaugh? Oh boy! I want to at least say this when it comes to the going over early thing. Like, who knows if it is the right decision or not? Small sample size, as Femi said, but like. Respect to Harbaugh for just saying what we did last time didn't work. We're going to do it completely different this time. 100%. Like that's not something that we are totally accustomed to this man doing. Like he's, he has his ways and does things a certain way sometimes. So for him to just completely turn on a dime and do something totally different, I'm like respect. Like it, it obviously worked out so I can, I can tip the cap, but like, that's not always something you get out of any NFL coach, frankly, much less John Harbaugh, who tends to be stuck in his ways with some things sometimes. Let, let him respond. Go let ahead. him respond. Go ahead, me? What, he's what, just, why me? He's just yeah, going to agree. He's just, just going to agree. I think, you, I think you give him too much credit that it was his decision, oh, number one. But two, but two. There's our guy. There's our guy. I, but I, two, I, I, I mean, I got to give you what you want, right? Yeah, play the hits. Yeah. Um, play the hits. But, but two, but, but, but Andrew, I agree with you. What they did last time didn't work in historic fashion <laughs> yes so so to do it the same way would would have been as arrogant as arrogant can be so when i heard you know sort of tongue-in-cheek when i heard they were going out monday i was like after their performance on sunday i would have left too um <laughs> but 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 seriously seriously i i applauded them going early and trying something different and and to to rita and femi's point I was I thought it was great to see them relaxed and 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 having a good time and that you know look we all quote quote unquote live and die every Sunday Monday whatever day they play at a football game but but you know you you got to be human you can't consume yourself 24/7 and and I applauded them for for going out early and and doing something different was that the difference in the game? I don't know. They right, were playing a team that I don't think is very good, you know, and very limited offensively. And if they can't get the run game going and the Ravens stop the run as well as anybody, they're very one dimensional and they don't have a guy that can help them. But I wanted to go, I wanted to go back to something Femi said, because uh, the Moncton thing is, is interesting to me because, um, it was so we, we we lived through Roman for so long. I, I I was dying for something different, and I'm not seeing as much different as I want to see. I, I'm not seeing, you know, I, I I see early in the game they do the quick slant. They're five wide. They did a quick slant to Odell. It was a huge play. I didn't see it again. That's a problem for me. The, my problem is is that they're not the same um you know we got we gotta we got we're not the same we're gonna you know take the ball and shove it down your throat team they're not built that way and they have the most dynamic player in the nfl i want to see more inside the five going five wide and creating those running lanes and let lamar do what lamar does and i'm not seeing that and 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 that's that's the frustrating thing for me. And I think, yeah, I like the conservative because I'm always a fan, especially early in games. Take the points when you can and then do what you have to do later in the game to get more points if you need them. But I, I'm really confused by this Moncton offense and what it is. And um, 
I, I don't know that they have an identity through six games, and that that's really concerning for me. Um, some of that we can say, well, last week they had an identity. They threw the ball all over the place and nobody could catch the ball. Okay, that's fair. I'll listen to that. But it's yeah. just – it's really yeah. it's really weird to me how, how this Moncton offense – at times, looks very much like we've seen the last three years. Femi, before you respond, I just want to say two things you need to know about our guy, KZ. One, he is a resident John Harbaugh hater. And then <laughs> two, two, what you also need to know is he's not great with names. So, like, the Moncton offense is probably the thing that I would do out behind oh, yeah. my in my backyard here because I live in Moncton. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're thinking of Todd Moncton. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing I'm, – I'm, I'm picking up when he's putting down. Yeah. I, I know, I, I know I'm sure KZ still calls it the Pac-10 because that's who the type of dude he is. <laughs> he can't help it, it, he, Hey, he, hey, he's, hey. He's a, my, he's a, my daddy he's a, called it the Pac-10. I'm going to call it the Pac-10. Yeah, he's a, he's a renaissance man probably to a fault, but that's okay, KZ. You can do your thing, brother. Um, let, let, me, let me say this. I think there's a lot of um, – wisdom in what Casey just said in regard to what we're seeing and what we used to see. I still think that the, the floor and the ceiling are higher with coach Munkin. In my opinion, the floor and the ceiling are higher. Um, we have not seen a complete game yet. With that being said, they should be six and zero. They should be six and zero. with that being said. They do not have an identity yet, KZ. You hit the nail on the head, brother. They do not have an identity yet. You know why? Because every time they try to become something, a penalty, a turnover, a fumble, a boneheaded pen, something crazy happens. You know, what? it's really hard to, to become that the crazy thing, potential is a dangerous thing, right? Because you you have to focus on what your ability is now, but recognizing that your current ability is dynamic which means that it can go up or down it's not static and i know that i believe based on all my years in football and all the things that i've seen everything they need is in that locker room i can't say that i've said that about any ravens offense probably since 2019 hmm. they were they were always doing more with less lamar was always doing more with less go look at the numbers go look at the investment in receivers go look at the quality of play by skill guys since lamar took over and until this year, they never really invested in it. Now, there's going to be growing pains. There's going to be philosophical differences between Coach Munkin and Coach Roman. There's also going to be a learning period that doesn't end at training camp. It's a, You learn throughout the whole season. I promise you, not just the Ravens, but from a macro analysis, if you look at every NFL team, the ones that are good are going to continue to evolve. The only team right now that's sitting in a stratosphere on their own is the Niners. Everyone else is in everyone else that's good is kind of in the same place. The Niners are on a whole nother level right now. And I can't wait for Christmas to go see how we do against them. There's a lot going to happen between then. I know that. But I'm just saying that, like, that for me is going to be the real, real benchmark test when they get there, hoping that everyone's going to be healthy at that point. But obviously, a lot of wins have to come between now and then. But that's that's the team that I that I go and say they're they're on a different level. It's the Niners. Rita, Rita, I think, muted. Yeah, Rita, I think you muted, muted yourself somehow. You got to unmute yourself real quick. I don't, I, I hang don't on, know how that Hang happens. on. Before you do that, I have to address the fact that I'm looking at Trippy right now. And I don't know if you guys see the same thing. He looks like when my son was a baby and would look up at ceiling fans and just stare at them <laughs> for like five minutes. I don't know where Trippy is. Trippy, you got to unmute yourself too, bro. Like, I don't know where he is. But I just looked down and he legitimately oh, looked my like bad. There I go. My bad. You're, you're good, bro. It's cool. I just looked at you and all of a sudden all I see was just you staring up. Well, hold at the up. Ceiling. I, I, I wanted to agree with the dude said. What's his name? KZ? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree because I said that about three weeks ago on Twitter and everybody was like, what you mean? Like, we don't have no identity on the offense, like at all. Like, but like I said, it's still early though. But like Benny said, man, like. Benny. I love it. I love it. I love it. You call me everything but my name, Trippy. <laughs> the man is a Super Bowl champion <laughs> hero. It's my bad. Hey, it's Vinny. Femi. 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 Look, Rita, look, I asked Rita the other day, too. Look, I still got it wrong. But Femi, I'm sorry. Is my name not under my damn picture? Yeah. I'm sorry about that. But, um, yeah, it's just like no identity. And it's like... I just want us to play better. Like I'm gonna keep saying it because it's like you gotta understand. Like, like we got rid of Greg Roman for a reason, and it's like I don't see nothing though. But like, 
I mean, hopefully something will change, I, though. But can I can I say it this way? Because what stands out well, to me. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rita. Y'all, go y'all ahead. Y'all did all of that, and I was supposed to talk. Okay. <laughs> what I was going to say was to add to Femi's point. I understand that this is the Ravens post game show, so y'all might not want to hear this. But the rest of the league looks exactly like the Ravens do right now. Nobody has a real identity, including right now. the Chiefs. No, uh, inclu- including the Chiefs. The Chiefs act like they want to run the ball because they know they don't have a real number one receiver. Y'all sit there and talk about how bad Juju is when they look like they could use Juju right now. Everybody looks beatable except for San Francisco because they know who they are and they have the personnel to be who they are. Everybody else is trying to figure this out. Yes, I understand we don't want to hear that because we root and talk about the Baltimore Ravens, but they're they're in a position – and they are, and they have the they have the personnel that can help them throughout trying to figure out who they are. Because I do think that what they want to be is a balanced team. But like Femi said, sometimes the penalties, or you know, if they have a, a loss, a, a tackle for loss, puts them in a position where they they throw out what it is that they had planned and what to do. They want to be one thing, but luckily for the Ravens, nobody else knows who they want to be either. So that's good enough. They for get now. another yeah for and now I agree. San and, on and, Christmas. Well, but to the point though, Rita, they, they get another good they get another good measuring stick game next week. Is um yes they do Carson, against Detroit. Yes, Carson just shared this second ago. Teams coming back from London that and the NFL just changed this a couple years ago, so teams don't get buys coming back from London. They don't only have to play; they got a good test. This is a Lions team that we know is really good, and this provides another opportunity for them to see kind of exactly where they are stacked up against other good football teams. So, if you're wanting to be dismissive and saying simply the Ravens are just better than the Titans, and I wouldn't disagree with that, I think they are just better than the Titans. They turn around and they get a really good opportunity to sort of show that they can measure up to some of the better teams in the NFL next week at home. It won't be easy. And teams have struggled as to the point coming back from London. It's not an easy thing to do to readjust. And I don't know that we know enough, Femi. Maybe you've got all the data about how to readjust back from London. But they've got to get back quickly and get right back to work because this is not going to be easy next Sunday. Yeah, no, I think Detroit is is one of the teams that I've kind of put a star on early in the season. And I know some of you know, and maybe some of you don't know this, but I have an NFL analytics company. And all we do is look at matchups and predictions and projections around team play. Detroit is one of the highest graded out teams that we look at and analyze in regard to our predictions and ability to win matchups. Detroit is a problem. I, I picked them to win the NFC North before the season started. They have been. We the did most, too, I think. I yeah. think Glenn and I did too. Yeah. So, so, they, so they, did they, I. They, they have <laughs> been one of the most consistent teams in the NFL since the middle of last year, I believe. You know what I mean? We have a, we have a rank score and we have a volatility score. Volatility leads, is, is that unpredictability number. The Ravens have a higher volatility score than Detroit does right now. But from a rank perspective, D- Detroit is slightly above the Ravens because they have a better record. And they've just done better late in games. But I think roster to roster, I think the Ravens have a better roster. I think the Ravens have the best. If you just match them up and you look at who's the most dynamic player on the field, the Ravens are probably usually going to win that argument, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, but in regard to what Detroit does, they have a culture and they have a head coach that has come out there and did a 180 on how people see and believe what their capability is. And they're going to come in here so confident. Yep. I expect that game to be a knockout drag out game. Let me point out really quickly, since we're talking about Detroit, they are three point favorites on the road in Tampa this afternoon. And if you want to bet that game, go to superbook.com or download the Superbook app and use the code Glenn Clark 23 when you sign up and you'll get up to $250 in a same day first bet match win or lose with superbook.com or the Superbook app. Again, the code Glenn Clark 23. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I want to go. I want to go broad as we start winding down here. And and Josh, I'll come back to you for this. I still feel more encouraged than discouraged through six games. I, I don't know exactly how to measure that, and I'll attempt to write about it tomorrow for Press Box. But on the whole, I am more encouraged. I I am still concerned about certain things. It was nice. You know, after we had that conversation about the edge rush last week, we pointed out it was nice to see the edge rushers step up, make some big plays, especially down the stretch today. I still have areas that I think are, but I think on on the whole, six games in, I am more encouraged about the direction of this team than discouraged. Josh, I'll let you go first. 
I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, and listening to all the stuff about the, the one thing I'll say why, why I'm encouraged is because I do think they have an incredible amount of balance on this team. And if we can ward off any of these injuries, and I want to ask, did Marcus Williams, I, I saw him hobbling off. Did we hear anything about they, that? Did not, they said, yes. a, ha- they they said a hamstring. Oh, oh, that's what they said, a that, hamstring. That, so. that bummed me out. Um, and, we did not um, get an update on him or on Brent Urban after the game from John Harbaugh. Yeah, I, I, so I agree with you 100%. Uh, I, I feel I, – I, and I'll say this also about finding their identity. I mean, and I, agree with, I agree with Femi um, and Rita. Uh, you know, yeah, San Francisco is in a class of itself, and they deserve that right now. Everyone else is sort of in the same boat. But I also think we didn't have – these guys didn't play a lot together at all in the preseason, right? So finding that identity is going to take a minute. And, and, and – when we have started to do it, as Femi's saying, we've, we've been shooting ourselves in the foot with these bad penalties or stupid mistakes. But I, I, I feel really excited about this team. I still do. I'm just a little nervous because of the way some of these games have gone. But I really I do think today was huge. Also, can I just say one thing? And then I'm going to jump. Uh, and I love you all. But Geno Stone, can we give my man Geno Stone no making plays Hello? when he needs to make Gino plays? Geno is about to be. Geno is, is just is having pricing a season. himself out. That boy about he's to get paid, him, Rita. He, he's pricing oh. himself out of Baltimore. That's how I see that. I mean, he is just a – he's I'm finding sorry. the ball. And I am proud of that guy, man. I mean, that is – he has come in and just been an absolute ball hawk for us and just playing great. And also, this is a question for Femi. I'm sorry, I want to throw one thing because I was curious. Why were we able to get so much pressure at the end of the games? I mean, we got it early on, too, but it just seemed like at the end, what was changing there where we were just literally yeah. sacking him every play? Was Malik, it their coverages? Malik? Yeah, Malik, Malik holds on to the ball too long, Josh. Yep. You know what I mean? That's, That's the difference it. between him and Tannehill. Tannehill will throw it up, but Malik is just like, look, 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 run around, run in circles. And, hey, this is the NFL. This isn't Liberty where you can do, you know, run for 3,000 yards and throw 3,000 yards. And this is the NFL. That's it. You know, yep. so that, that's the answer right there, Josh. And I'll tell you this, too. I don't give a damn. Anybody says momentum is real. And I think uh, there were parts of that game where Tennessee had some momentum. They were clicking. They were they, they were feeling themselves. They had a nice little energy, a nice little vibe. And they were doing a good job in middle parts of that of the game. So I think part of it is momentum. But a big part of the sacks late was that Ryan Tannehill was out of the game. And Malik Harrison, Malik Harrison, that's oh, our guy. Malik yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you know what, Malik, yeah. Malik you know what I mean? See, I got, I got Raven. He was I, doing I his KZ impression. Femi, Femi, Femi. 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 Gino Stone. Let, let Gino me Stone. screw up the names, Momentum man. Momentum killer. That's Gino my Stone. thing, man. Momentum killer. Yeah, Love uh, him. Benny, Josh. That was proud of that Benny boy. talking. <laughs> that was Benny talking and not Femi. That was Benny talking. <laughs> Josh, love you, brother. Appreciate you. Great to hear from you Good today. Good to see you, dude. Josh. Take care, Josh. That's Josh, I think I already muted himself. See you, buddy. There he is. <laughs> um, uh, I'll let anybody else jump in. You know, I, I just more encouraged than discouraged at this point. I'll go last. I'll go last. Just yeah. So I'll go last. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say I'm encouraged because they should be 6-0. and oh. But, But this is. And, and I, I don't want to be like this, but this is just my, my frame of the, of the regular season. I don't care. None of this matters. I expect, <laughs> I expect the Ravens to be in the playoffs. I expect them to challenge for the division title. But, you know, we keep saying, you know, they don't have their identity and there's still time. There's still time. We're on to week seven. It's no longer early. So, Yes, they should be six and zero, oh, but they, you know, the old saying, "You but are who they, you they're are who not. they say you are." They are what your record says you are. So I, I, I'm encouraged because I think they every game they play, they have the opportunity to win. But I have a level of concern, and I hate to be on the fence like that, but but that's where I am. Trippy, you want to chime in before we we're going to go around and let Rita and then Femi wrap us up? I mean, um. I feel the same way. Like, I feel good because I can see what our team can do. I still, I'm still upset we could be six and zero, oh, but I could, I could see, I could see where we going at. But it's just my, um, this is my opinion. Not even being a super fan, like I still want us to do better because it's like, regardless, is you know, it's just week one. I know we could play better, but the lines ain't gonna come in and just sleep on us. You feel what I'm saying? So, yep. I just hope we get it together. Though we still look good. Hopefully, I mean, maybe. They just still chemistry going on, but I still feel confident though. I mean, three and two. I mean, we. Could, I mean, 
six and zero oh sounds good, but I mean, three and two not that bad. Four, four you know and two mean? now. Don't oh, take. Oh, a, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm don't sorry. Don't take four a loss away. Yeah, four and two not that bad. So, hey, Trippy, you're in London, right, Trippy? No, I ain't making. No, he didn't go this week. He was was with me earlier. I was gonna say, I was hope I hope he's in London drinking, having a good time because he's getting his (laughs) numbers and names all. Man, I I hope. (laughs) Well, they were at a brewery today. Wait a second, that might still be a little bit of that going. I was at the brewery and I ain't had nothing to drink. I'm proud of myself. You should have said you should have said you had a couple pints and hey, I had a couple (laughs) pints, guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm feeling myself a little bit. Like Rita last week. Woo! Rita last week. Rita Ooh. was feeling it last Damn, week. Rita was feeling I got it. Singed. I got singed over here last week. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, Rita, before you take this one, let me remind everybody that Rita and I and Tyus Bowser will be at Mother's North on Tuesday night in Timonium for the next Tyus Bowser show brought to you by Superbook, AJ Michaels, and helpmygamblingproblem.org. You can find out more, pressboxonline.com slash Bowser. But come join us on Tuesday night with Tyus and a special guest. Talk about a win, which is always a more pleasant thing for us to be talking about when we do these shows. Rita, your thoughts, encouraged versus discouraged? Um, two things. So one that has nothing to do with the Ravens, but has something to do with us. I, I, we got a lot of love today at um, Guilford Hall Brewery. Oh, I a love lot of that. People, uh, said that they, they, you know, appreciated you and I, Glenn, and appreciated this post game show. So I want to shout out everybody that came up to me and 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 talked about how much they love um, you and I talking about uh, the Ravens. So thank you all if you're listening. We really appreciate that. Um, in terms of um, discouraged or uh, encouraged. I am encouraged, but I think I'm gonna go with KZ. You and you know KZ and I typically do not agree with most things, um, but I understand his reasoning behind that because you are supposed to be six and zero. You should be six and zero, and yet you've lost two games that you should have won. So I do understand having a little bit of doubt there because the Ravens have given you very good reason to be doubtful. Um, but I already mentioned that the NFL and the AFC in itself appears to be very winnable. So that's an a encouraging thing. And the Ravens are still finding a groove and they still have Lamar Jackson who can help them navigate through that as, as, while they're doing that should be encouraging while this defense, as much as we complain about sex, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't, right? They're still a very good unit. They are a very good unit. And I do think that this offense will find a good rhythm, a, a sweet spot that they really like um, in a conference that at first we thought was a gauntlet. But as of right now, it feels like it could be anybody's to win. So I think that fans should be encouraged um, when you look at this roster and when you look at coaching that they can essentially play with anybody in the AFC. I like that. Femi, you get the final word. Yeah. So, you know, I think for me, let me, let me just use some numbers to back up how I feel. So uh, Ravens uh, offense is um, 16th in scoring middle of the pack. Okay. That's fine. Uh, Defense is third in scoring, right? Total yards. Defense is fourth. Um, Passing yards. Defense is third, third down conversion. Ravens offense is number eight. I'm going, I'm kind of going back and forth. Right. My point is, is that I always look to look at metrics to see how many, positions are you in the top 10 in the NFL in the Ravens are top 10 in aggregate from offense defense and special teams as as much as any team is they're 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 in the upper echelon of teams in regard to top 10 appearances in the stat in the in the stats in the in the statistics right Hmm. that's encouraging now statistics alone you don't win a football game right um but I still think that the Ravens are nowhere and I'm going to use that dangerous word again they're nowhere near their potential but they're four and two could be six and oh but you need those losses to do a self-check. You need those losses to go back to the drawing board and clean up what cost you winnable games. And sometimes when you win those games, you tend to kind of shrug those things off and keep it moving. Hmm. So I am encouraged because we know what they could be and we know right. where they are. And I'll say that luck really has not played a role yet if anything, the Ravens have had bad luck to start the season too. But through the course of the of a season, and I'm telling you, this is something I really pay attention to. This is more art than science. Luck does even out over the course of the year in regard to calls, injuries, different things like that. Some things break your way. Some things don't break your way. I can't think of very many things that have broken the Ravens' way in the first six, seven weeks of the season. They've kind of gone against the Ravens in most, in, in, in most cases. But in regard to talent, in regard to the locker room, in regard to the little changes that I think Coach Harbaugh made today just by being more conservative, 
by acknowledging explicitly that we shot ourselves in the foot too many times, self-inflicted wounds too many times. I think Coach Munkin is going to hit a really good growth spurt in here somewhere where he's going to be like, this is who we are. These are the plays that work. Uh, this is our personality. This is how we have to get things done. I still don't think Lamar has fully, fully, fully tapped into his big playability yet. He's made Lamar's played great. He really has. No I doubt. think his receivers have let him down in a lot of situations today. Part of one of those plays today too. I'm, yeah, we we really didn't spend a lot. We didn't really spend a lot of time on I'm the not going thing. To because that man has been already been beat up enough. Right. Psychologically, we don't need to already, beat him up even he's more. He's already right. in a bad place psychologically, or at least was. You know. I know he's resilient. I know he's tough, but he probably is going to watch that. He's going to know, like, come on, man. Either A, I got to be more clear about whether I'm going to stop or, or break it to an out. Yep. Look like to me, Lamar thought he was going to run an out route. I don't know what, what exactly what happened, but Lamar's accuracy and his just ball placement has been so good all season other than a couple plays here and there. But overall, I don't think the Ravens are even close to scratching their full capability yet. Now, if you continue to turn the ball over, if you continue to have untimely penalties, you'll never reach your full potential. You got to eliminate those things first. Now, not to say you're going to play a perfect game, but they've had way too many consequential penalties and way too many consequential turnovers in the in this part of the season to start. All right. Uh, by the way, really interesting thing going on. The Panthers are up fourteen nothing on the Dolphins right now. Yeah, I was and, just thinking at that. And that's a live number minus three and a half for the Dolphins. So yeah, just we, take uh, a look. We, yeah, we we all. I think we um. Oh man, that's okay. Yeah, that's crazy. I didn't didn't think. That yeah, was, like, right. Like, right. Process. Yeah, process that for a second. If you think that's interesting, maybe get over to superbook.com or the superbook app. Use the code Glenn Clark twenty three. Sign up, get that two hundred fifty up to two hundred fifty dollars same day first bet match, win or lose. And again, if you or a loved one has a gambling problem, call one eight hundred Gambler or visit helpmygamblingproblem.org for free confidential services. This is great, guys. Uh, really appreciated this. Fun to have a whole day of football to watch afterwards. I love that. Femi, appreciate you, brother. Back at it next Sunday after Ravens Lions. Looking forward to it. Uh, Rita, love you. You and I will be love together on Tuesday night, and then we'll be yep. uh, on uh, one hundred five seven on Wednesday night as well this week. So a lot. To yep. Yes. This week. Yep, we're back together. KZ, Trippy, appreciate you guys. Uh, we will be back following next Sunday, Ravens Lions for the next. Hey, hey, hey Glenn. Week. Yeah, Trip. I had to say this because I told Rita this already. You know what we were supposed to be getting ready for, right? What's that? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. We're not yeah. talking about that. No, I'm still. I know it should be game one. Tonight should be game one. I don't want to think about yeah, it. I don't yeah. want to think about it. I'm too sad. Don't remind me. All right, guys. Love All you. Right. Appreciate Bye, you. I'll talk to you. Bye, guys. We'll see you next Sunday. All right. See ya. Bye, guys.